If you thought the scandal surrounding Jenny Thomas couldn't get any worse, you were sorely mistaken. It now appears that the wife of Justice Clarence Thomas was way more involved at the White House than just sending text messages to the chief of staff, among others, to overturn the election. The Daily Beast reports today that during Donald Trump's presidency, Jenny Thomas would visit the White House often. She was armed with written memos about who Trump should hire and who he should purge from the administration. Her hiring recommendations reportedly included known bigots and at least one suspected spy. And the firing lists were often based on conjecture and deep state conspiracy theories. One former senior Trump official told the Daily Beast, quote, we all knew that within minutes after Jenny left her meeting with the president, he would start yelling about firing people for being disloyal. When Jenny Thomas showed up, you knew your day was wrecked. Another former Trump White House official added, these blank lists were so insane and unworkable, a lot of them were dripping with paranoia and read like they were written by a disturbed person. Joining me now for more is Molly Jong Fast. She's a contributing writer for The Atlantic. Molly, Molly, how was Ginny Thomas, this dripping with paranoia and insanity, Ginny Thomas able to gain so much sway inside the Trump White House? Was it merely just because her husband was Justice Clarence Thomas? Yeah, I mean, one of the trademarks of the Trump White House was that they would just bring in whoever, right? I mean, they had, you know, if Trump saw you on TV, you could end up working in that White House. So I don't think there was a huge barrier to entry. I think more of the issue is that she was this very extreme, pretty wacky woman who a lot of people thought was pretty out there. And because Trump became president, this kind of very wacky far right stuff became more and more the norm. And so some of the stuff that people wouldn't even listen to because it was so ridiculous was now sort of standard GOP fare. But Molly, Trump left the White House more than a year ago, right? So why is it that we're just finding out now so much about a Supreme Court justice's wife often visiting the president of the United States in the Oval Office. You know, some of it is incompetence, right, because they didn't keep good records. Mm -hmm. Some of it is nefarious because they didn't keep good records because they were doing stuff they knew was wrong. Some of it is um, that, you know, she's the wife of a Supreme Court justice. She's not a Supreme Court justice herself. Now, it happens to be that a lot of the stuff she's involved with January 6th has really sort of shined the spotlight on her, right? We know she went to the January 6th rally. We don't really know what other involvement she had, but certainly it's very dubious. Um, and I think that's sort of thrown her into the spotlight. Also, you know, Thomas did vote against that January 6th. You know, he signed that dis that dissent on the shadow docket, which he didn't need to do. So I would say that, yes, she sort of put herself in the spotlight, but it's clear from everything I've read and from the interviews I've seen that she's always been very ambitious and very interested in trying to kind of leverage her position to have more of a voice in the conservative I, world. Yeah, and while you talk about Clarence Thomas himself, his own involvement vis-a-vis um, -vis January 6th and some other stuff in terms of trying to prevent the transparency that we always need and deserve um, in the American public. After the revelations about the text she was sending to Mark Meadows about overturning the election came out, some Democrats have called on Clarence Thomas to recuse himself from cases involving January 6th. Is that enough? recusal, or do they need to be even more aggressive and call for him to actually be off the Supreme Court of the United States? I mean, I think Democrats politically should call for whatever this most stringent punishment is, which would be an impeachment, just because it's wrong. And we see that there's a lot of nefarious stuff here, and what's wrong is wrong. And Democrats need to um, you know, stand up for the rule of law because Republicans sure won't be doing that. I think the problem ultimately is that Democrats have a very small majority. They only have 50 seats in the Senate and they're holding the House by a little bit of a fraction. So they really don't have the numbers to to impeach a Supreme Court justice. Um, but I think they have to stand up for the norms. And obviously this is not 
anywhere near the normal judicial norms. So I, I think, yes, they should speak. And, and also politically, the calculus is good for them, too, because like people don't like this. They don't like feeling like their Supreme Court is involved in politicking, and they shouldn't. So I think they should. I mean, I don't know ultimately if it, they certainly don't have the numbers, but they certainly should do it. So I'll say this much. Molly, I'll send text messages. My husband doesn't read all my text messages. I'll go to some places. My husband doesn't always know where I'm going. But you got to admit, it's awfully hard to believe that Clarence Thomas had no clue about what his wife was doing during the Trump administration. I mean, it's not like she's, you know, going to the ellipse on January 6th, maybe armed with a pitchfork and, you know, one of those Viking hats and saying, hey, honey, I'll be home in time for cocktails before dinner. What can we do to be able to find out about Clarence Thomas's basis of knowledge in terms of what his wife is up to? Do you think we're ever going to find out what he knew? I mean, probably not. I would be pretty surprised. I don't know how that would happen. But I do think that ultimately, you know, this is really bad. And again, this Supreme Court is already so nuts. I mean, it's a 6-3 conservative court. Uh, Thomas is one of the sort of, I mean, he's very conservative, but, you know, Kavanaugh might be the swing vote. I mean, it's a very conservative court. They're doing a lot of crazy stuff already. I mean, God knows the decisions they hand, hand down in June. I mean, it's, he, you know, this is the canary in the coal mine, right? There's a lot of other stuff going on. Um, but the problem, again, is like just Democrats don't have the votes. And so, I mean, the more the January 6th committee can do with hearings and having to people testify and and even like have Ginny Thomas testify, like there's she's not above the law, like just because she's married to a Supreme Court justice. I mean, if Republicans had this, if this was happening, if Democrats were doing this, Republicans would hold, I mean, remember Benghazi? They would hold, they would have everyone and their sister testify mm -hmm. on television in prime time. And they would be, I mean, the thing you really see is Democrats are so bad at this. Like, this is really scary stuff that could lead to the end of democracy. And Democrats are just really tentative and scared that it's going to somehow Republicans are going to try to get back at them. And they have to do what's right. I mean, democracy depends on it. Well, any good investigation is, as we heard Merrick Garland say today, you chase down all the leads, you see where they go. I think Ginny Thomas is more than just a common denominator at this point. I think she does have to sit down with the January 6th committee. Molly John Fast, thank you again for being here this evening.